What's up guys, AJ here from 3D Printing Systems. In today's video I want to talk to you about the basic print settings in the UpStudio software and how changing these settings will affect your prints. So let's get stuck in. Now to view the print settings, we first have to start by loading a model. So I'm just going to add a simple cube in and that's going to allow us to view all of the print settings available to us. Also make sure that you are connected to a printer, we're connected to an up box here, which is why we've got the up box platform displayed. Now, coming down to the left hand side, locate print and it will come up with your print settings. Now initially you might only see the most basic of print settings, but up here if we click the double arrow it will open up a few more print settings that we can change and alter. Now, with any print, there's three main settings that you're mostly like, most likely to change. Number one is the layer thickness, number two is the infill, and then number three is the support angle. So let's go first to the layer thickness. Now, we've got a range of layer thicknesses between 0.1 and 0.35 mils. For a layer thickness of 0.1, you're gonna get the highest quality, the highest resolution print, but it will take the most time. For 0.35, you'll get the lowest quality, but it will take a significantly shorter amount of time to print. Now, if you wanna do something that's high quality that you're gonna be showing off or displaying, a 0.1 mil print or even a 0.2 mil print will give you a good balance of quality versus speed. Now, if you were just doing a quick draft print, 0.35 would be fine. And it was much, much quicker to get your print out. So the second thing we'll talk about is infill. Now, infill has a direct impact on how long your print is going to take and how strong the part is going to be. We've got a few different infill options. Now the first two are special infills. First one being no infill at all, it will just print the outside walls of your object, including the top and bottom. Now this would be fine if you're trying to do something that you want to be hollow, but have to keep in mind that there'll be no support inside, so if it does have a top and a bottom, like our cube here, the top will sag. The second one is no infill on the top or bottom what you'll get is just the vertical walls of your model. Now, uh, this will be fine if you're doing something like a vase or something that you just needed the horizontal walls, right? but it's very limited in what you're likely to use it for. Then we've got the final options, which are percentages of the amount of infill you're gonna have. And you can see they're printed in sort of a crisscross honeycomb pattern. Now the lowest percentage is 13%. I mean, you're gonna have very, very large gaps between the support walls. The last one is 99%, meaning that your, your object that you're printing is almost completely solid. Now, for your everyday prints, you're probably looking at maybe 20 to 65% infill. Uh, anything more than that, and you're gonna be using a lot of time and a lot of material. So your material cost is going to go up as well. If you're just doing something really quick and you just need a draft print with a little bit of support to hold up the top and bottom or any overhanging walls, 13% would be fine. Okay. Now, the last main one that you need to change is the support angle. So right, but normally for ABS prints, 30 degrees is the minimum support angle you want. Anything less than the 30 degree angle uh, being supported uh, with ABS, and then you're likely to get drooping uh, or rough underside edges. Now for PLA, it's, it cools a lot faster and it's much, much less likely to warp. So a minimum threshold angle of 10 degrees would be okay for PLA. Now the more quality that you want or the larger overhanging surfaces that you have, the higher you want this support angle to be. We can go up to a maximum of 80 degrees, meaning that almost all overhanging surfaces are supported. Now the negative or the downside to this is that it's gonna be very hard to remove the support material, or if not very hard, there will be a lot of it. And again, with your material cost and your material usage, that's gonna go up with the more support that you use. Now there are a few other uh, basic settings here that we'll go through. We've got quality. Now quality isn't necessarily how good the object looks uh, directly, it's more the speed at which it prints and that's what affects the quality. So with the normal speed, it's going to be going at a good balance between being fast and having up with a good quality, whereas with a turbo speed, you're gonna have a very, very short print time, but it will do it quite fast, and you're likely to see a decrease in quality of that print. Fine is gonna be your fastest print, uh, sorry, slowest print time. So with a fine print, 
it's going to take a very long time but you should get the highest quality out of your print again for a good balance of time versus quality a normal print speed is fine okay nozzle offset now nozzle offset uh, let's say that you're printing a, something in ABS and you notice that it starts to lift up. Now what that could mean is that your nozzle isn't quite close enough to your platform or to your perf board. So with a nozzle offset, we could make that a little bit closer by introducing a negative 0.2, uh, 0.2 difference and that will bring the nozzle slightly closer to the platform and it should get your print to start sticking. Now if we go the other way and say that the nozzle is slightly too close, either it's dragging on the perf board or you're getting a little bit of issues with blockages, then you can add a positive nozzle offset, say 0.2, and that will bring the nozzle about 0.2 further away from the board, or 0.2 of a millimeter further away from the board. And that will stop, or should stop your blockage problems. Uh, watch that, let's have a look at the rest. Unsolid model, so we leave, we leave this tick for most of the time. What it does is it allows you to print a model that might have a few errors but from your CAD program. Now if you untick it, then the software will not let you print something that it detects has errors and it could save you a bit of filament and a bit of time printing something that isn't necessarily going to work. No raft means that there is no raft printed on the perf board and the model starts printing straight away and then no support means that there's no support printed for the model so any overhangs or undercuts are going to be unsupported and might droop down a bit. If you're printing with PLA this might be what you want because PLA is more likely to maintain its shape and less likely to sag when there's no support depending on the, the degree of it. So the last thing I'll show you is in the maintenance menu when you are starting a print. Your print board, leave it as a perf board if that's what you're using. We recommend this to all new users. Um, and then we've got the type of material, and this is a big one. Depending on whether you're using ABS or PLA, the software has different print settings for each type of material in terms of how hot the nozzle gets and how hot the platform gets. Now, for ABS, we've got ABS and ABS Plus for the up filament, and then for PLA, you've got the PLA settings. You can make customized settings for different filaments, but we'll cover that in a different video in advanced print, uh, print settings. Okay, and that's, uh, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you found this video and the information in it helpful. Uh, if you want to see a video on more advanced print settings, then check out our other tutorial. You can find the link in the description below. As always, share this video with your friends and your fellow up users, and like up this video, and I'll catch you next time.